By the way, is it kosher if I take the mic off the stand? It's better? Okay. I'm actually asking the audio guys, but... Yeah, yeah, just don't, don't spin it around over your head or anything. Got it. Good thing I wasn't planning on that. All right, hey everybody, thanks for coming out tonight. So they say that hindsight is 2020. I think what they're really saying when they say this is that they're these basic life truths that we all know, but sometimes we forget about them and that makes us do some silly things. The fun thing about being a graphic designer is when I make these mistakes, I can visually see them. So a couple of years ago, I was working on a project where we had this drop down menu that just did not look right to me, right? It looked like a yellow square with these blue links in it and the blue links underlined when you hovered over them and I thought, this is not a drop-down menu. Like, we grew up with Windows and Macs. We know a drop-down is a gray box with these black links in it. And when you hover the mouse over them, you get, like, this blue highlighting cover, right? Like, we all grew up with that. So I thought, I'll make all my menus look like this. And I immediately ran into a problem. The problem was the menu was on top of a pale blue bar, and everything blended into each other in a way that I just did not like. So I tried changing the blue bar to make it darker, but then something else didn't look right, and it turned into a chain reaction of events where I changed the look and feel of the entire screen just to accommodate one gray box. So what am I doing wrong? I'm thinking in absolutes. And I'm thinking all menus should be gray boxes, right? But we all know that we shouldn't think in absolutes. So why am I doing this? What's going on? What's really going on is I'm failing to consider context, right? That blue bar was a part of the context that should have informed my decision-making process, but I overlooked that. So what can, what can we apply to life here? Well, think about that person on Facebook who likes to debate about political policy X, and I used to be this guy, by the way. Like, you'd have this one guy who'd be like, oh, political policy X works great in Denmark, so we should totally have it here. And the next person is like, no, political policy X was horrible in Greece, so we shouldn't have it here. And and I'd never get any further than, oh, it worked great here, right? I never looked into the context of why it would work in Denmark and why Denmark is contextually similar to us. When I see this on a screen, it's really easy for me to see contextually that this is not quite right. But when you look at the real world, context is a little bit trickier to suss out, right? It's more difficult to process. But pattern recognition is a lot easier in Photoshop. So to transition to my second story, when I first got started training to be a magazine designer in a college newsroom, one of the first things that they taught me to do, and funny story, was how to alter photographs. But we had a strict ethics code, don't worry. It's just that my job was the style editor, so part of my job was to make our movie reviews look interesting. One of the techniques I use a lot is called cutouts. It's where you remove the image of a person from an image and then do other things with it. So like in this case, I messed around with the background behind me, but you can also do things like put polka dots behind me or pinstripes or whatever, it doesn't matter. The technique to do this is actually fairly simple. All you have to be able to do is just trace the shape of the person you want to make a cut out of and then do some copy-paste action and now you have a new layer in Photoshop with just that person and no background. Now the technique worked well for me for a long time but eventually I ran into an interesting problem. I had one of those really high definition photos where you get like the insane close up on the pimple and you can see in really intimate detail that this person has really frizzy hair. And I'm trying to do a cut out of this, so I'm literally trying to trace the shape of an individual strand of hair. And the harder I try, the harder I fail, and eventually I have a meltdown. So I go out for a walk, I come back, and I realize something important. I'm the only person who has access to the high-def original version of the photograph. I'm the only person who gets to look at the insane close-up of the pimple, and if instead of trying to trace the shape of an individual strand of hair, I just cut it, I'm the only person who's going to know that something is missing. And working like this in Photoshop has taught me something, because when people see my work from Photoshop, just by seeing it, they tend to accept what they see as I present it. And when you work like that for a few years, eventually I realized on a deeper life level that I'm the only person who has access to the high-def original version of my life. Each one of you is the only person who gets to see the insane close-up of the emotional pimples or the frizzy disorganization of your life. And this is comforting for me because it means when I meet new people, they can't magically just know my biggest regrets and fears. But on the other hand, it also means that I need to be mindful of to whom I present my emotional pimples and frizzy disorganization. Thinking about life in the way that I think about Photoshop made me realize that I want to change my behavior. 
but it's not simple, right? You'd think it'd be as simple as saying, oh, if I'm having a bad day, I shouldn't tell everybody. But life is messy and complicated, and emotions make bad ideas sound like good ideas. The truth of the matter is, hindsight may be 2020, but Photoshop has a 3200% zoom lens. <laughs> And when you spend hours and hours and hours looking through this lens, it changes the way that you look at yourself and the world around you. Thank you for listening, everybody. Have a good night.